you may not have thought about light pollution, but if you are keen on reducing waste like I am, you will soon look around your world with a different perspective. Light pollution is not just a problem for astronomers. I am all about recycling and reusing. I also believe in the third R, reducing, which is important in the fight against light pollution. And I am all about making a big splash. I have got the latest gear and I am not afraid to show it. If I want to see at night, I just aim one of my head lights. I would like you to try this light pollution quiz. Some of the multiple choice answers are complex. You viewers might want to pause this video and open up the quiz document in another window. It is at http colon slash slash calgary.rasc.ca slash lp slash lp underscore quiz dot pdf I accept your challenge. You will see that I am bright in all senses of that word. Okay smarty pants. Question 1. Which of the following are misconceptions about light pollution? A. Light at night prevents crime. B. More light improves visibility. C. You can get good illumination by throwing light a great distance. D. Light pollution is not really pollution because it goes away if you turn off the lights. E. Light pollution is only a problem for astronomers. F. All of the above. You said that light pollution was not just a problem for astronomers, so that is my answer, E. Actually, the correct answer is F. What? All of the choices are misconceptions. You are not as bright as you thought you were. The best studies on nighttime crime show that illumination increases crime rates. Also, while some light can improve visibility, too much can create glare, which always reduces visibility. Light at night disrupts the natural rhythms of hormones in people and animals even if the light is on only for a short time. So, light pollution does not go away when you turn off the lights. Next. How do we know that light is not the most important factor preventing home break-ins? A. Most home break-ins occur during the day. B. Some home break-ins occur during the day. C. Burglars turn on the lights to see what they are stealing. D. Burglars check to see that people are not home before they break in. E. Answers A and D. Or F. Answers B and C. Are you trying to confuse me? I am not trying. That it is your natural state. Answer D was, burglars check to see that people are not home before they break in. Answer D must be right. I also people who were away at work and had their houses broken into during the day. Hmm. If burglars operate during the day, then light is not a deterrent. I am going to answer. E. Which combines answers A and D. You are correct. Most home break-ins occur during the day, when homes are most likely to be vacant. Question 3. What is light trespass? A. A motion sensor light turning on after you trespass into someone's yard. B. Light shining where it is not wanted. C. Putting a light fixture on someone else's land. D. All of the above. E. None of the above. I know. Answer B. Light shining where it is not wanted. I am astounded. How did you know that? I was caught shining my headlights into someone's yard when I was looking for something I lost and got towed off. All right. Next. What causes sky glow? A. Starlight. B. Aurora. C. Moonlight. D. Twilight. E. Earth shine. F. None of the above. Don't they all cause sky glow? No, sky glow is the brightening caused by artificial light. Better luck on number 5. How can you minimize light trespass? A. Use low wattage bulbs. B. Aim lights downward. C. Use motion sensor lights. D. Use fully shielded fixtures. E. Answers B and D. Or F. Answers B and C. Another mind-bending set of answers. But, I know about light trespass. My headlights are fully shielded, which is answer D. I still can cause light trespass with these lights, 
So I also need to aim them downward, which is answer B. Both options B and D are correct, so the answer to your question is E. I must say, I am really quite clever. And modest, too. And modest, too. Question 6. Which of the following statements is true? A. A high-pressure sodium lamp is more efficient than an incandescent bulb. B. A mercury vapor lamp is less efficient than a high-pressure sodium lamp. C. A metal halide lamp is less efficient than an incandescent bulb. D. Answers A and B. E. Answers A and C. Or F. Answers B and C. Whoa! I am going to split this into two parts. First I have to examine the three first answers, then see if any of the combination answers match what I decide is true for the first three. Answer A is true. High pressure bulbs are more efficient than incandescent bulbs. In fact, all other lamp types are more efficient than incandescent. This makes answer C incorrect, since it implies that the white colored lights at car lots are less efficient. Also, answer B is correct. The old bluish mercury vapor lights were replaced in many areas with the more efficient pinkish orange high pressure sodium lights. So, both A and B are correct. This matches answer D. That was very logical. It is almost like you are a robot with a computer for a brain. Yes. Almost. Question 7. Which of the following is an example of efficient use of electricity? Remember to consider the bulb type and its use. A. A 35 watt low pressure sodium lamp on all night inside a vacant and locked parkade. B. A 100 watt high pressure sodium lamp on all night beside an all night grocery store. C. A 75 watt incandescent bulb in a motion sensor light at the front door of an apartment building. D. Answers A and B. E. Answers B and C. Or F. All are efficient. Well, I know answer, F, is likely to be wrong. Who would leave a light on in a locked and vacant parking garage? So, even though it was only a 35 watt lamp, answer, A, is wrong in my books. This makes, F, wrong too. The other answers are too tough for me. How about a little help? Most people only consider wattage when they are deciding whether something is efficient or not. But, you need to consider what I like to call the three E's. The first, E, is for efficient lamp. Choose the most efficient type that meets the goals of your application. Sometimes an inefficient and incandescent bulb is the best choice if you want relatively low illumination levels and rapid on-off capability. As in a residential motion sensor fixture. Don't choose an efficient lamp if it won't properly do the job. In Canadian winters, a compact fluorescent bulb won't turn on quickly enough in a motion sensor lamp. I never thought of that. The next, E, stands for efficient fixture. An efficient bulb is no good if the fixture allows light to be sprayed everywhere. A shielded or full cutoff fixture directs light where it is needed and none is wasted by creating glare. I never thought of that either. The final, E, represents efficient application. How is the light to be used? All night security lights have little effect on crime levels so motion sensor fixtures are a better choice. Choose the appropriate light output. Remember, sometimes less is more, don't over light, it can create bigger problems than it solves. Creating bright, pools, of light with strong contrasts allows hazards in the shadows to remain hidden. 40 watt bulbs are ideal motion sensor lights for homes. In other cases, sometimes it is best to use no light at all. So a motion sensor light on an apartment building might only be on for a short period if the lamp settings are adjusted correctly. So it doesn't matter as much if an incandescent bulb is used if it is not too bright and it is properly aimed and shielded. That could make answer C correct. The entrance to an all-night grocery store needs to be properly lit for the safety of customers. If the light fixture properly aims the illumination where it is needed, it might be an efficient use of electricity. You are really getting this. 
answers B and C both can be correct if properly done, so answer E can be considered the correct choice. Some people might say that a 100 watt high pressure sodium light is too bright for that use, leaving just answer C as correct. I'll give a correct mark to anyone who chose answer B, C, or E. You could also say that this question had no correct answer, since all choices are inefficient in some aspect. Question 8. In areas that burn coal and natural gas to generate electricity, how much carbon dioxide is a dusk to dawn 100 watt bulb responsible for in a year? A. No carbon dioxide, but it gives off 39 kilograms of ozone. B. 39 kilograms of carbon dioxide and 390 kilograms of ozone. C. 390 kilograms of carbon dioxide and 39 kilograms of ozone. D. 390 kilograms of carbon dioxide and no ozone. Or E. None of the above. Burning fossil fuels like natural gas or coal generates only carbon dioxide, but no ozone. This means that answers A, B, and C are wrong. I am going to guess that the answer is likely 39 kilograms or 390 kilograms, but I am not sure which is correct. 390 kilograms seems like an awful lot of carbon dioxide, so I will choose 39 kilograms, making my answer E, none of the above. Oh, too bad. The correct answer varies by province or state and the mix of methods to generate electricity. Nuclear and hydroelectric power generation create no carbon dioxide, but there are other issues with those methods. But, I asked about areas that burn coal and natural gas to generate electricity. And the answer is about 390 kilograms, answer D. I believe we at question number 9. That is correct. Which of the following is not a result of light pollution? A. Energy waste. B. Sky glow. C. Ozone depletion. D. Greenhouse gas emissions. E. Answer C and D. I will do this systematically with my super brain. Light pollution is wasted light and it takes energy to make that light. So. Answer A is a result of light pollution. We already talked about sky glow as being a product of light pollution. So answer B is not the answer I am looking for. I am brilliant. Answer C is the ozone one. I don't know whether it is true or not. Hopefully answer D will give me some insight. Greenhouse gas emissions are related to light pollution. So answer D is not the one that I am looking for. C is the only answer that I don't know, but it has to be the only correct answer. I am in awe. Really? No. But at least you got it right. Final question. Which of the following are responsible for creating sky glow? A. Poorly designed light fixtures allowing light to shine upwards. B. Poorly aimed light fixtures allowing light to shine upwards. C. Reflected light from overlit areas. D. All of the above. E. Answers A and B. Ah. This is easy. Poorly designed light fixtures can let light shine up into the sky so answer A is correct. Yes, but? I am not finished. In answer B, even if properly shielded lights are used, if they are not aimed correctly, they still can spill light directly into the sky, like my headlights. And in answer C, the light that actually makes it to the ground and is not just wasted by shining upwards, might still be reflected upwards since the ground is not perfectly black. The only way to reduce this effect is to choose the right amount of light for the situation. Don't overlight. This means answer D. All of the above. Is my final answer. You really are starting to understand light pollution. I have to give the credit to you. I understand what you were trying to tell me. For example, that hanging table lamp is full cut off and puts the light exactly where it is needed, but next to it, the hanging bear bulb is less efficient because it sprays light everywhere, including right into my eyes, 